air. Well, today I bring you the beautiful, stunning, yet again, Immaculate Illabagiza. This lady is just fabulous. She is the author and a genocide survivor. So she's written some great books. Mm -hmm. She's a great speaker. And she's going to tell you about all the things that God is doing in her life to date. You go to her website. It's immaculate.com. Well, beautiful one, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Thank you so much for We're having so me. We're so happy to have you thank, back. Thank, thank you. And I, before we go any further, I do want to say that you are given a retreat this weekend here in Birmingham yes. at St. Thomas yes. in Montevallo, Alabama. Yes. And so if anybody you are out there and you're local and you want to go to the retreat, um, contact them at um, the Magnificat, I believe it is. Yes. And or they could just go. Just to my it, website. Go to your website, website, and that's where and she go is. Pretty treats, and you right. see it. Yeah. It will be perfect. So you want to get to see her in person? You could do that Thank too. You. Well, welcome, <laughs> and we you. want you to because maybe someone is at home tuning in, and they're saying, "I don't know her." Maybe they missed you the last time you it's were on. Um, we want you to give our family at home, our audience, just explain, mm -hmm. share um, who you are, what God has done in a little. Shorter version, because then we got so many other things to talk true, about too, yeah. right? And like I was saying, thank you so much for having me. I remember last time we were together, and uh, everyone knew mm -hmm. we have met and mm -hmm. watched the story, <laughs> so they love you. So thank you, and I'm so happy to be here. So my story is: I come from Rwanda, this tiny country from Africa, right in the center of Africa. Some people now know the country as a place actually Our Lady appeared to in Africa, but also where the genocide happened. So in 1994, I was a student in college, and I went home for Easter holiday, and the terrible genocide broke down, broke out mm -hmm. in the country when I was home. So we had two main tribes, Tutsi and Hutu, but I come from a tribe Tutsi that was not well loved. Mm -hmm. So the whole genocide was prepared to kill my tribe. It was really more about power. Mm -hmm. You know, if we kill that tribe, then we never have to share. Mm -hmm. It was more like political parties. Mm -hmm. So things started. We didn't know how bad things can be because when you have been living in peace, at least, you know, in peace a little bit, mm -hmm. no one ever wanted to kill you. It's hard to think mm -hmm. that a war can happen. Somebody can run after you, want to kill you, and mm -hmm. for what? So we knew things were bad, but how can they start? So when they started, I remember my father gave me a rosary in the morning and asked me to go to hide to a neighbor. I was one girl among three boys, and everyone wanted to see me safe, and mm -hmm. that's how I'm alive today, mm -hmm. because everyone stayed behind. So I went to the neighbor who was from the Hutu tribe. Not everyone was killing. Right. There were many great people mm -hmm. in that tribe. So they knew this man was a pretty good man. So I went there, he put me to sit in three by four feet bathroom mm -hmm. with other seven women. He would also come there to hide? Well, who came, mm. who ran there because yeah. they just knew he was a good mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. And we knew now our, our tribe was being attacked. You know, families were being burned in their mm -hmm. homes. Mm -hmm. And some other people, like my village, they were together, we were just waiting. Who is causing this trouble? Mm -hmm. So he put me to sit in this tiny bathroom, kind of against my will. I'm like, what are you doing? Why? Mm -hmm. But he said, I know what can happen. He was an older person. He knew what this discrimination had done in mm -hmm. the past. So with other seven women, we sat there, we are complaining, at least for the first days, and at the end of the week, things were getting bad. Mm -hmm. The government have given order to kill everybody of my tribe. Mm -hmm. And I remember one man said, who was a government minister, he went on radio and he said, don't forget children. Mm -hmm. A child of a snake is a snake, a child mm -hmm. of a cockroach, mm -hmm. horrible things. So during those, the time we were there, I wish I knew how long we were going to be there. We, spe we stayed in that bathroom three months, mm -hmm. from April until July. And during that time, I really lived on prayer. I mean, the man gave us something to eat. He would bring us food like at night, you know, with leftovers of his children. Mm -hmm. He told them that we have gone, mm -hmm. so he, he had to hide to feed us. Yeah. And we stayed there for three months. When we came out, we found out, I found out, my whole family was killed. Mm -hmm. Mom and dad, brothers, grandma and grandpa. Mm. But I have prayed so much during the time I was hiding, and my spirit was like shielded. Mm. Even when I wanted to break down, I couldn't. I felt like something <coughs> strange was covering me. Mm. So when I was separating my dad, he gave me a rosary, 
And that's what I did during the three months. Mm -hmm. I prayed the rosary from morning until night. It was the only way to be safe. Because if I didn't pray, I couldn't take my thoughts, the imagination mm -hmm. of what was possible. Mm -hmm. And on the top of the imagination, they were coming to search every home. So they were killing people they found in homes. I mean, they came up to five inches away from us. And by the grace of God, they turned around and left. Mm -hmm. So I was fighting anger and fear. Those were the, my worst enemies. Mm -hmm. When I was angry, it was, I can die out of anger. I was a monster myself inside. I thought I would avenge my family. Can't believe this is happening to us. Then I would think about how they might kill me. Fear would take over. Mm -hmm. I would be shaking out of fear. So the only refuge I had was to pray the rosary mm -hmm. from morning until night. I remember I counted how many rosaries I said. I said 27 rosaries every single day mm. from morning until night. And 40 divine mercy chaplets every single day. Mm. It took me from 6 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. Then I would fall asleep and wake up in the morning, grab the rosary again, mm -hmm. and start praying right away. Mm -hmm. So that's how I lived. And after that, I mean, I, I wrote a book about this. It was every day by the grace of God. The second book I wrote about... What's the first book? Is it Left to Tell? Left to okay. Tell. Okay. It was a that whole was your experience, first book. my first yeah. book. <clears throat> the second one is called Led by Faith. Mm. I truly meant exactly that title because after when you have no family, you don't know who to ask a question. And you don't know who you belong to. Who you belong to. Yeah, it's like, where who am to I trust? in this world? Yeah, right. who, who to trust. Mm. It's like learning to walk, mm. learning to talk completely anew. And only thing could guide me was, what will God do in this moment? Because some gifts were clothed in shining, you know, cover. Mm -hmm. And then you realize, no, this might be a danger. So I had to ask myself every moment, I just will do whatever God wants me to do. If I think something is not God wanting it, or he, does, he might not approve it, no matter how good it is, or it seems, I'm not doing it. Mm. So every step I took, I had to consult my faith. I went to Mass like seeking my father every morning. I'm like, okay, so this is the new mm. day. What do we do? Mm. How, like, lead me. Mm -hmm. So it was led by faith. Mm -hmm. The path was, what Our Lady will want me to do in this moment. Who do I talk to because they can or because they're nice? Let me go towards the kind person. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was just all like measuring. Yeah. yeah when you, we read when you were in the bathroom mm -hmm. those three months, you taught yourself English? I did. Because that's amazing. <laughs> so you had a Bible and a dictionary because you didn't speak English went, before you went into the bathroom? No. So what happened was, so I'm in the bathroom, I'm fighting this monster of anger, mm -hmm. which would only be calmed only when I was praying. Mm -hmm. But I remember any time I went through the prayer, which is a part of the rosary, our Lord is prayer, mm -hmm. forgive as we forgive. Any time I went through that, I'm like, ah, oh, this, like my heart was not at peace, but how do I forgive them? Mm -hmm. So when I was able to let go, which was a journey, when I was able to understand, I mean, I remember going on my knees and asking God, I think you want me to forgive, but mm -hmm. look at my situation. Mm -hmm. How do I do it? But if you want it, then help me, because I don't know how. And let me tell you, a moment came when I remember when Jesus was dying on the cross, I was meditating on the fifth sorrowful mystery mm -hmm. of the rosary. And I knew all that before, just one time, I was really seeking for an answer. How do you forgive somebody who is trying to kill you? Maybe who killed your mom already? Mm -hmm. When he said, forgive them, Father, the second part, they don't know what they do. Mm. I said, that's it. Mm. They don't get it. Mm. And why is it I want to be like them, and yet I don't even like mm. what they're doing? Mm -hmm. So all that, something with the grace of God changed my way of thinking. When that anger was able to go out of my heart, it was like a, a air came out of a balloon. Mm. Now I'm like, oh, I can think. Mm -hmm. I can care about me. My heart was so clear. It was like a voice in me was saying, now what? Now that you're not going to plan to kill people, mm -hmm. now that you're not going to revenge, this anger is not there, what do you do? I said, I'm going to look for a job. Mm -hmm. But what if I find a job with people who speak English? Mm -hmm. Something said, well, you better start now. But how? <coughs> well, how are you talking now? You're talking to mm -hmm. me. We're talking inside, even if you can't open mm -hmm. your mouth. 
So I asked the man who was hiding us to give me a book in English and a dictionary, English, French. And I had to read one word per word. Go to the dictionary. Mm -hmm. And then I would put little phrases together. Mm -hmm. And this is so funny how God would. This is what I always tell people. When anger is in our heart, it blocks our blessings. Mm -hmm. It blocks the, the suggestions of God. The, the, the future you have. When that anger was there, I could not even think about that. Mm -hmm. The girls were together in the bathroom. They thought I was going crazy. Mm -hmm. She's learning English. Mm -hmm. But this is funny. Three months later, I found myself in an office of United Nations. My first interview, my first job was in English. Incredible. Every single question they asked me, <laughs> I have rehearsed it in the bathroom. <laughs> I would imagine things like, <coughs> so imagine somebody maybe who would save me, might ask me, what's your name? Right. So I would make that in, in French and then make, translate it in English yeah. and I memorize it. Mm -hmm. Then I have to say my name is, mm -hmm. then I come from, where do you come from? Mm -hmm. What did you study? Mm -hmm. Every single question mm -hmm. of the interview, Bless I have you. memorized it mm -hmm. in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And all that, I saw it as a grace of God that came to me, but also the grace that came because the anger was out. Mm -hmm. Then I can care right. about myself. Right. And that's what happened when we're angry. We block the sun to come in. Mm -hmm. We block the light to come in, the light of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's no space. There's no space, there's no space for you. God to move because yeah. of the, the anger or the, the hatred, the your own decisions, what you're going to do. Yeah, and it becomes an obsession. It becomes mm -hmm. like a, a sickness. Yeah. You think about somebody who hurt you, you start again. You call one person, right. you call a second person. Right. Tell them the same thing over and over. That's already a sign that I'm wounded mm -hmm. by this anger. But I saw the grace of God working. And if he can work here in that situation, mm. he can work in anybody's situation. I think where we get in trouble, and it may not be that someone's killing yes. our family members, it just may be a broken relationship yes. or in, you know, simple as that, where we make um, anger and hatred and unforgiveness our friend, yes. and then we nurse it, and then it grows, and then, you know, and it's, it's just, it's so not of God, but we, we make a place and a space for it. And it's when you mm -hmm. really denounce it and, and say, even if you don't feel it, because mm -hmm. a lot of people say, well, I don't feel like I want to forgive them. Well, it doesn't matter. Will it, will right? It. Will it? Just say, I choose by an act of my will to let them go. Yeah, I think the other side of it, possibly, mm -hmm. you would know better than I, I guess. But it's like, if I don't take vengeance, if I don't do something, this is truly an injustice, mm -hmm. then I'm not a, I'm not a good person. I, I'm not a courageous person. I'm not a family person. Or I've abandoned my family. It's you know, a part so, of the lies. So it, they see it as good. Yeah. Right. It's a part of the lies that comes inside. So then I condone the wrong if I don't act right. against it. Mm -hmm. Or they are strong, I'm weak. Mm -hmm. There's so many lies that right. comes in when you're angry. And it truly, I will never condemn anybody who is in that mood, especially who <laughs> have been really hurt, mm -hmm. because sometimes you don't know what to do. Right. For me to move into wanting to forgive, it wasn't because I felt it. It's because in the end I realized I need God. Mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. I just told him I believe in him. And if he said pray this way, mm -hmm. it's my duty to do it. So when I couldn't pray that way, the same way I was asking God, protect me in the bathroom, why not ask him to change my heart? Right. Because we must do his will. Sometimes we want to sin, the sin tastes good, mm -hmm. but we are not doing it because God said don't. Right. And then later you realize, thank God I didn't, mm -hmm. because a sin has consequences. So even in anger is an act of will because, especially as Christians, it's wrong. Jesus said, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. It's a law. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we just have to move into the law. And then when you can't, that's what he said, ask me. Mm -hmm. I will help you. Right. But w that obedience in the beginning of the law of God, of God, willing to respect him, the grace comes and just make it so, mm -hmm. you know, visible. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, you've got to get to that point where he really, you acknowledge him as Lord, 
and he doesn't force his lordship over you, so you are allowed to do a lot with free will. With and that, free that's what happened in, yes. the, in the genocide. That's what's happening with terrorism. That's what's happening in yeah. racism. That God doesn't like it. intervene into mm -hmm. our free will. Yes. That you have to make a choice. Is he Lord? Is my anger Lord? Is my controlling the situation Lord? Um, Joy, let's take a phone call. Elizabeth, welcome to At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question or your comment for Immaculate. Um, yes, um, I just wanted Mackley to know I love her. I read her first book. I'm going to read the second. I think that's where I am. But I've been having sufferings of anger that feels demonic. It doesn't feel like me and feel like I'm being sliced and diced inside. I do my best to offer it up. I don't know what, why it's happening. I don't feel I, I'm, I mean, if I have unforgiveness, I give the, the person and the people and the situations to God all the time. I don't dwell on it. I don't talk about it so I just ask you I don't know what's going on and I pray a lot like I went to two masses today I've already been in hours of prayer and I still have it right now so I just wanted to ask you okay. thank you for your, your question and your sharing oh I, I can feel what she means because the anger I had when I was in that bathroom I would feel anger and mm -hmm. I will sweat out of anger mm -hmm. because my thoughts will go on in a way that my blood and my heart is popping and what is going on and I remember thinking nobody's touching me but why am I my blood is doing this so it is something that really outside of you that take over but what I will suggest you my dear sister pray and look in the Bible and continue to ask what do I do mm -hmm. find a priest ask him what you can do right. people to pray over you Look at the promises of Our Lady when she said, pray the rosary from the heart and I, I will help you. Like, seek what you can do and do not give up. Because right. many times we think, I have done everything. Mm -hmm. I was in those places. Mm -hmm. But I continue to ask myself, what next should I do? Mm -hmm. And God, I will wait until you act. Right. Just don't give up. Jesus said, if you pray, two of you, together, in the same you know, in, an, mm -hmm. in my name, Agreed. but you pray mm -hmm. for the same thing. Right. I am between you. So you not only, I'm not say, just saying the rosary or going to mass, go to confession, clean your heart. Right. Ask a priest, mm -hmm. somebody to pray for you. Ask sisters, say the rosary together. Right. And then remember all the promises, write them down. Jesus said, if I do this, if I believe, mm -hmm. I'm going to believe, mm -hmm. you know. It's beautiful counsel. Yeah. Yes. The other thing I would say to that is sometimes we just need to let these images and thoughts drift down the river. Mm -hmm. Don't okay. pick them up. Don't keep looking at them and say, just go by. Mm -hmm. And they'll go by sometimes. Just let sure. it go by. Don't obsess. Don't keep picking it up. Don't get the drift with it as it's going down. Yes, let so it go. Sure. We're going to take a break at this point. We'll be back with more from Immaculate. Don't go away. We want to hear from you. We'll be right back. Now, Immaculate, she's a beautiful author. She's a genocide survivor. But she's doing lots of other things to advance forgiveness and peace and hope for the whole world. You could go to her website, Immaculate.com. Immaculate, share with us more about Our Lady of Cabello, um, about this apparition. Is it an approved apparition? When did this take place in relationship to the genocide? What's, what was her message? Was it just for that time? Does it go on? Mm. Share with us about her. Well, that is a be most beautiful part <laughs> of the whole story of the history of Rwanda is really the Blessed Mother and Our Lady of Kibeho. You know, she's the same. So Our Lady appeared in 1881, 12 years before the genocide. So she's, I mean, I wrote about this, mm -hmm. Our Lady of Kibeho, my, my book about, about her, but she had predicted the genocide. So it's really almost like a continuation of my whole story. 12 years before the genocide, she said, if you don't come back to God, if you don't come back to respect God's commandments, to love one another, to see each other as the children of God, this is what is coming. On August 15, 1982, she showed the children who saw her, people killing each other with machetes. Mm. I remember my mom and dad were there. They, they came home crying, terrified. They said the children saw people dying. And they would say, Mother, this cannot happen. And I already said, if you don't, this would happen. And I'm um, sh shared this. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Were you saying your parents what? knew the seers, or did they go when this was taking place? Yeah. Did other people gather around? And, and who were the seers? So the seers were so far approved by the Vatican. 
you know, which is, by the way, mm -hmm. the first apparition to be approved by the Vatican mm -hmm. in Africa. Okay. So the children who had apparition approved three girls from a high school. So this apparition was m different than many apparitions. Our lady would give appointment to the kids, and she would say, I'm coming back on August 15 at 3. A hundred thousand people would come. Mm -hmm. We don't know how the world will go around the country, and people will show up. So they had to build the podium, and they would bring microphone speakers, and then see who this kid is talking mm -hmm. to and what they're talking about. So one of those things people witnessed. I used to go there as a child. I'm like, oh my God, they're looking at our lady. They're smiling. So you actually saw this. I saw I them. Mean, saw, wow. And now I'm grown up yeah. and I am a friend of the, the visionaries. Mm -hmm. One of them is a cloister nun in Italy. She became a nun. And another one is in Kibeho. Our lady told her to stay there. And the other died during the genocide. She was killed. She was killed. Yeah. So our lady was so good. I mean, to warn us, mm -hmm. but to also remind us about the power of the prayer. Mm -hmm. But she said, if you pray from your heart, sincerely, what is coming will not happen. But she also said, my message I'm giving here does not only concern Rwanda, not even just Africa, but the whole world. Mm -hmm. But the most beautiful message our lady gave us was the love she revealed in the Kibeho about her heart. Mm -hmm. I remember one French priest, he wrote about this in 1983, and he said, if these apparitions will be approved by the church, they will, be, they will be the most loving, mm -hmm. warm apparitions of the Blessed Mother on mm -hmm. Earth. Because she will come and stay like eight hours. She will teach the children songs. Mm -hmm. she, will teach, she will dance with them, like how we dance in the church, very mm -hmm. beautiful, very simple, mm -hmm. and very soft. Mm -hmm. So she, she was asking them about their family. Mm -hmm. She will teach them how to talk to each other how to, when they nickname each other, to use beautiful words. Mm -hmm. She was a loving and loving mother, mm -hmm. yeah. Did our Lord appear? He did, he also did. And right now they're still studying that in okay. the Vatican. But one girl who had apparitions of a lady, who already approved, she also had apparitions of a Lord. So he did appear. It, it was just beautiful to see that we can communicate with heaven mm -hmm. through these children. I mean, I love Our Lady everywhere she appeared, Fatima, Lourdes, I mm -hmm. go there. Yeah. And I do take people to Kibeho to visit every November okay. for the feast of Our Lady. I'm taking them this year. You know, again, people can see on my website, you know, immaculate.com. But Our Lady used to say, bring my children here. I'm sending you. So as a child, I used to say, I will help you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. then um, I would laugh at myself. What am I going to do? How am I going to help her? Mm -hmm. But after I, I published my first book, Left to Tell, my whole life became public like this and so you really you're an ambassador for I, our lady of cabejo and what's taking place yes. there in in rwanda um I, I well it, it was not spared cabejo it was this, not this this cleansing ethnic cleansing oh. and tribal cleansing so how has it advanced since then i would imagine you had thousands of people that were killed there Everywhere. some buried some not Mm -hmm. remains maybe buried and flowers coming up around them and yeah. has it advanced what, what's it like when you go now and oh the, the whole country I mean a million people died in a country I mean Rwanda is so small you can cross the country in five six hours driving so a million people were killed in three months mm -hmm. everywhere was dead bodies including Kibeho and that actually also taught me something when you think that oh this place is holy I can do wrong there, nothing can touch. No, mm -hmm. it, the, this is Kibeho is in, right. in our hearts, right. number one. Mm -hmm. So I already have told us, those who have embraced my message, yeah. the gate of heaven will be open for them. And those who will be, I will protect them and I will give them a message to carry. So Kibeho, the message is, it was here, number one, but it was cleansed, like everywhere. Mm -hmm. Some people who killed, they run to the shrine, who were killing, right. thinking, you can't they'll be safe yeah they'll be safe but no. they got killed there too exactly mm -hmm. and even the killers mm -hmm. after they run there so it, it was not good yeah. mm -hmm. you know he makes such a great point it's mm -hmm. that we think well god appeared here or something very special took here so mm -hmm. this place is holy nothing can happen but it's the lord says i'm holy you must be holy exactly mm -hmm. so we can actually thwart temporarily mm -hmm. 
the holy plans of God. And he allows yeah. us to put this back in his face. And we're yes. warned if you do this, mm -hmm. there are implications for this. God's holiness prevails in the end over yeah. everything, but not always here. Exactly. Because he's saying you have to cooperate. This is a love relationship. Yes. I'm giving you a message. You have to embrace this message okay. or there are consequences to this. We'll find you in a way. We'll mm -hmm. find you in places, you know, sacrament if, if you're doing wrong. So I think in a way, it, it was the whole thing that happened there was definitely something that taught us a lot about be true to God. Mm -hmm. I mean, in Rwanda, some priest killed, some priest died saving people. Mm -hmm. some, some priests killed right. and, and some, some people died save. Sorry, saving. saving people. They and some priests their own lives. Exactly. And some pastors died. Other, I mean, like, trying to save people and some right. pastors killed. I understand. In that. every religion, right. there was like, the truth came out. So you can be a mm -hmm. priest, mm -hmm. but it's really between you and God. Right. And maybe a temptation will show who you are truly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have more holy people in the priesthood mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I, I love my church, I love my, our priest. But yes, those things happen. So what it did to us was truth, like mm -hmm. our hearts with mm -hmm. God. Yeah. And Our Lady have said, for people who come to this place, there's a blessing, God lives everywhere. Our Lady have appeared. So mm -hmm. for sure, it's a holy place. Right. Yeah. So, and that's why pilgrims go there. Mm -hmm. what, what are the, both of the tribes, uh, the Tutsis and, and the Hutu, yeah. Hutus, yeah. Now, before Christianity, there were still these tribes, right? Yeah. Oh, no. Were they before Christianity? No. It was no? created by the colony. God. It was and yet, okay. not good, yeah. Okay. Um, so there is a recognition of the one true God and of Jesus. Yes. Is there much repentance and, and healing and the supremacy of Christ mm -hmm. over their tribal thinking? Is that happening more? Or can something like this occur again? I don't think it will occur again. What I felt, it wasn't that because Christianity was introduced that people changed or be, actually you would, we never had a war before. Mm -hmm. Christianity yeah. was introduced and after t we started having wars. But however, I'm not saying again this is the reason, but what happened, what I have seen, was a, every heart has again to accept. Mm -hmm. You can go to church without praying. So it, it became that the reality of how you believe, what you believe, it's really what matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like now, for example, a lady used to tell us there are many people who are not praying sincerely. Mm -hmm. And we were 98% Christians in the country. But she said, people are not praying sincerely. Mm -hmm. They are not practicing the right. commandment of God. Mm -hmm. And that's why this is going to happen to you. Mm -hmm. But she said, because God has allowed me to touch this country and to share the message, and for many who are embracing it, this country will rise again. Mm -hmm. So the way things are now in Rwanda, the new government have removed all the tribes. Mm -hmm. Everyone is Rwandan. Mm -hmm. okay. So now, out of their parishions came a beautiful fruit. Mm -hmm. beautiful. And now the country, everyone is Rwandans, no yeah. more tribes anymore. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's really it's reconciliation, it's much yes. better. So you have an Thank opportunity God. that, yes. which is known in recent times for mm. violence, division, yeah. murder can be known for reconciliation, peace, the glory of the Lord. Yeah. Uh, as other nations perhaps might be on the precipice of what took place there in yes. 1994. Yeah. And, and so that message is valid for all the nations of the earth, including our own nation. Exactly. To, yes. to learn the lesson of this, what way do you want to go? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Joe, it's a warning season. for everybody. Yes. Um, you lost most of your family in 1994 genocide in Rwanda. Today's killings continue across the world, such as in Barcelona. Do you see any hope for a brighter future? And this is Ken from Freeport, Maine. Yes, I do. I see hope because, you know, what can change in our hearts? It's just this, a decision. Mm -hmm. It's not about money. It's not about how to work hard and, and get that. The same way was anger in my heart. I have decided I will become a soldier and revenge my family. Sure. And just like that, by willing, it was gone mm -hmm. in a second. Willing in the grace of God. So I truly have hope. I pray with hope mm -hmm. that anything can change, right. but also anything is possible mm -hmm. if we don't listen with our hearts. It's not magic, it's prayer. Right. Yeah. And speaking of prayer, tell us about the seven sorrows. So one of the things our lady spoke about in Kibeho, 
she taught us the seven sorrows rosary. So it's a rosary that have seven Hail Marys and the seven mysteries. Mm -hmm. She said it always existed, but people have forgotten about it. So she told this visionary, a 14 years old, her name was Marie Claire. She said, I wanted to teach the whole world. And she said, I will give many graces to the world for those who devote themselves to, to the this. the seven sorrows. Yes, the seven sorrows. So the girl used to tell our lady, Mother, I don't even have money to take a taxi mm -hmm. to go to the next city. How mm -hmm. do I teach the whole world? She said, just have the willing, the willing to help me and to love me, it's enough, my grace will take it. I have many children in the world. So, and she would tell the visionary to repeat to us and to say, my children help me. And I used to say, I will help you mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. right. And now I'm so glad when I have this occasion to speak in public, to do retreats, mm -hmm. we pray the seven sorrows rosary, mm -hmm. exactly as our lady gave us. And these beads actually, they are made from Rwanda. They grow up on a, on a flower in Rwanda. So people wow. make them there, I get them here, so that I continue to help mm -hmm. people who do. And I have seen the graces. Three things happen often, I mean any grace really, because I already promised. She says she will convert the most hardened hearts mm. through this seven source rosary. But I have seen people, you know how you work in the ministry of, you know, abortion? Ministry of, how do you call it, the mm -hmm. ministry you work in? Pregnancy Medical Center. Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. Pro-life. Yeah. Pro-life, yeah. So people have been trying to have babies mm -hmm. who can't. I have like 35 cases of mm -hmm. people who use this prayer mm -hmm. of the Seven Sorrows Rosary. Our Lady is giving babies mm -hmm. through the devotion. Okay. Mm -hmm. People who try 10 years, 7 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have, yeah, 35 cases. I have seen people who heal cancer. Mm -hmm. I mean, one lady told me she healed stage 4 pancreatic cancer. Okay. Literally, all her friends for two months, they pray this seven sorrows rosary every day, begging Our Lady in tears, mm -hmm. please help us, pray for us, begging God. Seven sorrows rosary. and seven Hail Marys. <laughs> yes, it what is. What are some of the sorrows? So the one moment? sorrow, the first one is a prophecy of Simeon. A sword shall pierce yes, your, your soul. Yes, oh, okay. the second one is a flight into Egypt when the baby Jesus, Herod, wanted to kill him. And that's a sorrow. It's yeah. a sorrow. Mm -hmm. And then the seven Hail Marys between. And then the third is when our Lord was lost for three days. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cry when you think about it. Sure. And then our Lord, our Lady said, we have to accept suffering. This is a safe way to accept our own and to be healed because we open our hearts and we have compassion on our mother mm -hmm. and our Lord. And how many of our children are lost? Mm -hmm. I and know. so to identify with her in yes. that's powerful. And the fourth is when our, our Lady met Jesus on the way to the cross. Our Lady will teach Marie Claire about this rosary and she will say, my children, think about it. Think about what I mm -hmm. went through. What if it was you? What would you feel if mm -hmm. it was you who met your child? Mm -hmm. So the, Marie Claire will say, I will feel sad. What else would you feel? She said, through these sorrows, I will heal hearts. So she wanted us to think about what will you feel? What did she feel? Mm -hmm. What we, our Lord felt when he looked in his mother's eyes? So mm -hmm. the fifth sorrow is when our lady was standing beneath the cross. So imagine what it was. She said, go there, even if you cry, but mm -hmm. go there. Mm -hmm. I will heal you through that. And then the sixth is when she received the body of our Lord. And the seventh is when she, he was placed in the tomb. Mm -hmm. And our lady will tell the visionary, I felt pain, mm. I felt this way. She said, I love it. She said when he was placed in the tomb, her new source of pain was, a lo was the loneliness mm. she felt. Mm. She went home, she cooked for him. Mm -hmm. She did all the work for him. Now he's not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't, you know, mm -hmm. she felt lonely. Mm -hmm. And she said it was even more because he was not just her child, but her God. Mm -hmm. So the visionary when she was meditating with one lady, she would be crying and shivering and trembling. And she would say, please save us, help us, pray for us, so that we, we can follow him. We can know that sin is so bad. Mm -hmm. Look how much it caused you to suffer. So it's a beautiful rosary. Our lady it said is it's a gift to the world these days. Yes. Well, it's amazing that she elaborated, elaborated up, yeah. upon each of the mysteries and, and shared her life oh, another, and her relationship with Another her, Jesus. thing I saw she had been healing through people who devote themselves to this rosary mm -hmm. is 
people have been addiction, addicted. Mm -hmm. A lot of addictions mm -hmm. are here through this. And I already have said it. Mm -hmm. And she said it does not replace the, the rosary. It's an ad right. prayer. Mm -hmm. But addictions, I have mm -hmm. seen people who hear from like really bad mm -hmm. stuff. And yeah. many addictions, I never knew they existed. Right, <laughs> yeah. right. Well, Immaculate, thank you for gracing us with your presence once again. Thank you. Thank you that you are a witness to, to life, mercy, forgiveness, and that God's grace prevails. Mm, bless you. We're going to take a break at this point. We'll be right back. Plenty more to come. Please don't go away. <laughs>